Okay, thank you. Okay. Can you see my screen? Anybody? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. So last time we talked about the orientation of uh, your course. And now we uh, move forward with the topic. So our, our focus now is on lesson two. So we'll discuss uh, gates and two tables. And for our next meeting, we will uh, move forward with the uh, boolean uh, algebra and uh, and uh, uh, the implementation of each so today's uh, topic will uh, will have uh, logic gates uh, through tables and after these two we'll have another topic on uh, boolean algebra and function simplification now, uh, what is a logic circuit? Anybody? So a logic circuit is a, uh, a circuit that converts parallel information to an asynchronous uh, serial format and serial information to a parallel format. So meaning a uh, uh, logic circuit cannot uh, is either uh, you could have direct or indirect uh, control. So uh, in this example, uh, this is a switch. So if you could uh, try to manipulate uh, the output, so you could have a zero, one, or in other case, you could reverse the output from either one or zero. So this is an example of a simple logic circuit and that is a, a switch. So normally in uh, in our uh, course, we'll discuss more on the uh, digital circuit, but we have some topics on analog circuit. Now, uh, what is uh, analog ver uh, signal and uh, compared to uh, digital signal? So an analog signal for, for in this example, you have uh, this uh, is your uh, voltage range. Uh, and after a few uh, seconds, it would increase and grad uh, gradually is going to uh, increase at that point. Then after uh, a few uh, after about uh, three uh, second or 2.5, it's going to fall. And that's uh, how analog signal uh, works. So what is the uh, trigonometric function for this? So we have an example is a sine wave. So this uh, will create a sinusoidal pattern. And this uh, would uh, generate in uh, digital format as uh, read by the computer. So how do we going to read the uh, analog uh, signal? So we need to convert the signal into digital by using a converter. That is your ADC. And uh, as your uh, uh, voltage increases, so uh, also the uh, digital signal also uh, reads one when your signal is going to fall so the signal will be zero so in this case a simple analog signal is a human interface to a computer or it is a electrical signal representing a sound so uh, when you for example if you're going to uh, 
uh, use a headphone so you could uh, able to uh, uh, hear the sound uh, coming from the headphones which are uh, these are your analog signal and uh, it was generated by the electricity so in that case uh, an ex another example also uh, the wall outlet or the uh, voltage from a uh, solar cell so these are example of your analog signals now for digital uh, systems uh, digital signals so we are referring to a computer or data your memory your smartphone and because uh, their hardware and information are being processed are digital so the information transmitted ov over the internet and the wireless network is also uh, digital now for the uh, analog system so this is an example of a circuit using analog uh, inverter and uh, as a comparison if you're going to draw the circuit it would create this uh, one so it's like a uh, operational uh, amplifier so you have your base voltage positive and your negative voltage and in reference to uh, you have your digital inverter that is from uh, voltage uh, positive and your uh, negative Okay. So, uh, give me a sec. Okay, so we go back now to our topic. So, uh, analog system uses direct mapping between uh, an electrical quantity and the information being processed. So, a digital system, on the other hand, uses discrete representation of information. So this is a uh, disc uh, an example of a uh, discrete uh, representation, and uh, and uh, we are converting uh, wires into a switch. So in this case, so the digital signals uh, to be uh, more immune to noise in addition to. Uh, requiring simple circuits that requires less power so that's one of the uh, uh, disadvantage of digital signal so we have noise uh, uh, is uh, uh, present mostly and uh, for this uh, this diagram shows the complexity of analog as compared to uh, digital so uh, what happens is we have uh, the analog amplifier uh, uses uh, dozens of transistors so as we know inside of this triangle it can be a bunch of circuitry and we have uh, two resistors that perform inversion of the input so the digital inverter in both cases of two transistors acts as switches to perform the inversion so in this case uh, uh, these were converted into uh, two transistors so uh, when uh, switch is closed so the input would be uh, zero and when the switch is open the input is one so in in other case if at your reference voltage is negative so when the switch is closed you will have an input uh, one on the other hand you have uh, zero when the switch is open 
Now, uh, as an introduction to our topic, so today we're uh, going to focus on the uh, the logic gates. So, as we know, you have uh, some background already in your some subjects, but in this case, uh, uh, this one would be more uh, detailed as compared to the introductory one. So, as we know, we have OR gate. So, when we say OR, what do we mean by OR? Anybody? When we say OR, you need an input either one input. So, for example, if you don't have an input, let's say you have a zero zero so you see or gate if you have zero zero what is the uh, output zero but if you have one one you have one so this becomes zero uh, this zero one and uh, one uh, zero so take note we always represent uh, each value either zero or one this means that it is either uh, true or false so that's how we generate our output using the input uh, values and now uh, for the AND gate so what uh, can you do remember is that if you have an AND gate it means that you need to have uh, two inputs uh, true to have an output. As you know, we have uh, this. So if your input is true, you will have an output. But if you don't have uh, either uh, both, you will have uh, uh, will have a zero output or false so for the not gate as a summary so you have either uh, you put one and this becomes uh, zero and uh, when you put zero this becomes one so that's uh, a, a quick glimpse of this uh, logic gate but yeah, uh, we are not finished. So we have uh, several types of gates that we're going to uh, discuss together with the uh, true table and the uh, diagrams also. Now, before we proceed uh, with the discussion on the logic gates, so we intend to uh, have to use this uh, logic symbol so normally you will encounter this in designing uh, systems so if you have a rectangle this is a example of a uh, system inside so if you have uh, uh, pins or a b c normally this is your input and your output is F. So in application of this uh, logic symbol, you could apply this uh, in this scenario. So if you have red, blue, green, yellow, and you could put uh, your uh, inputs either going to enter or exit your output either going to be enter or exit, but you will have an input of uh, these colors so you could do anything here if you want if you click red blue it goes to enter if you click uh, green yellow it's going to exit so it depends how you're going to create the um, circuit using this uh, logic symbol so in this example, you have uh, three inputs, A, B, C, and you have one uh, output. So you have two input and one output. In this scenario, you have 
four inputs and you have two output so it's going to be dependent on how you implement uh, the uh, circuit now we have already the logic symbol so now we move forward with the logic uh, truth table why do we have a truth table so in logic circuits so it means that uh, we have uh, n inputs and it would generate two to the n uh, possible input codes example if we have uh, two uh, two input so how many output do we have anybody if you have uh, two input what is the uh, expected uh, output do we have possible output anybody so you have if you raise this uh, by two uh two to the uh second power would be four so you have four possible output using uh two input now if you have uh three input as this example so these are your uh n so n1 n2 n3 or a b c so two to the third so you have three inputs so how many output do you expect for this example you will expect eight possible output now if that is you have uh, three input so inside the truth table you include the binary codes and i know you have some background in uh, binary conversion so binary conversion is already easy on this part so we'll not have to focus more on it and uh, likewise you need to apply your uh, basic electronics uh, knowledge here and uh, some uh, uh, programming uh, basic programming skill also so in this uh, uh, binary code so we assign each at the start as a zero that is in ascending order and you start your count from where so if if, if this is your uh, uh, input so you always start your count at the right and up to the left so this one is zero 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 and this is zero zero one and this is zero one zero so this equivalent uh, decimal value for this is two so rem remember that since we are using the binary uh input code so our number always start at zero so that's why you start your count from zero to seven and this would be eight bit uh binary so uh what will happen is so we have the listing of the input codes and these are the uh, series of uh combination between your input so in this case the binary count allow each inputs decimal equivalent to be used as the row number and correspondingly to the output of the circuit so you have the possible uh, input code so this likewise will appear on the output with reference to what is the input so example if uh, c is on and b is off and a is off you will have an output of one so that is
Now, another uh, thing you need to uh, understand is about the logic function. In this area, we're going to use this mostly in Boolean algebra. And uh, also, we can use this as a logic operation for the basic gates and the symbolic set of operators. So we have uh, uh, this one and uh, this one. So plus sign is or, or uh, this sign is and, or this one is XOR or XNOR. So how do you implement this? So we have, this is not add, this is not multiply, but this is uh, becomes your uh, symbolic set of operators. So uh, we will discuss this in uh, Boolean algebra, but as of now, we'll focus more on the uh, basic of the logic gates and other definitions that will be used in the future uh, lecture. Now, a, a logic function is used to describe a single output that can be uh, taken only by the values of one or zero. So that's uh, what you need here in this slide. And uh, f is a function that means that inside f, you have the input a, b, and c. So what would be uh, state that the inputs uh, a, b, and c would generate uh, an output based on the uh, input uh, logic expression. Now, for example, this is the uh, logic expression that we generate based on the uh, the gra on the table that we have. So we have. Uh, uh, function of a, b, c. So this is your input and this is your output. So you could uh, be able to read this as x or. So a, x or, b, x or, c. Or the similar uh, value you could have is this one using the subscript this is also the same meaning as a x or b x or uh, c and uh, this one is the simplest way that we use but uh, later we'll have to discuss each uh, logic symbol on each logic gate so now we proceed uh, another example that we're going to see in each uh, logic gate is their logic waveform. So what is a logic waveform? So logic uh, waveform is dependent on your truth table. As you see, for example, here, if you have a zero, zero, what is the output? So you have zero. And when you go on this side, as can as you see, if you are at uh, time one second, two second, three second, so if this is zero, this is your input thread. So A is zero, B is zero, and uh, C is zero. So you have F is also uh, zero. And now when you go to uh, A is zero, B is zero, and C is one. So you have F is one. So you go to this area. So this is from your uh, left. So this is your zero, zero, one. And you have uh, this one and you have your F on high level. So this is how you create your uh, graphical representation of the waveform in digital. This is in the same way as the same with your oscilloscope. 
so but your oscilloscope since uh, it's difficult for the oscilloscope to display digital circuit it has some noise on it so it would not be a perfect square but closely on this level so we have uh, two table logic function and we have uh, logic waveform now we start with the first very basic uh, logic gate and this is what we call buffer buffer uh, has a symbol that is input and we have output so what happened is uh, it's like uh, it makes your input as an output so that's how uh, a buffer is so output is equals to input so any value that is given to the uh, if you put zero here so the output is zero and if you have uh, input one you will have generate one so this is the logic function and this is the uh, waveform so you have level zero level zero and you have one if you have one input so normally where do we use buffer so we use a buffer in uh, maintaining the signal to such level as uh, one so is above a buffer circuit uh, usually amplifies the signal so why do we need a buffer so in cases if you use too much resistor so in time the signal becomes uh, not near to the tolerance value so in order to uh, maintain this signal a buffer is used by some designers in their circuit. So this just uh, not really boosts the signal, but maintains the level of the signal based on the specification. Now we have the uh, inverter. If we have a buffer, so we have the inverter. The inverter's uh, symbol is similar to the buffer, but the only difference is we have the, what we call the bubble. So the bubble symbolizes the inversion. It means that A is not equal to uh, B, or input is not equal to the output. So in the truth table, so you're going to put uh, zero if input is zero so you have output one and if you have input one you have output uh, zero so in this case you have a logic function describes this so you have uh, input output is equals to uh, not uh, input so when you're going to see the symbol it means not So this symbol means not, and uh, one of the difficulty here is that you need to put it always, but in some scenarios, there are some books, in order for us to uh, put, uh, eliminate this old uh, tradition, so uh, it's going to put, we put a uh, prime. So example, this one, output is, not equal to input so you just put prime it means that this is not uh, the same as the output or uh, in other case they put a, uh, a horizontal bar on the top of the variable so it means that this is not equal to the output and the same way as uh, you can see now we have the waveform so example if uh, input is zero so you have output one 
then if the input is 1, you will have an output 0. And so that's how inverter works in this scenario. And for our second or uh, third gate that we're going to discuss is about the AND gate. So the AND gate is, uh, uh, as it means that if you both uh, have the input, so you will have an output. But if you don't have an input, what will happen? It's either you will not have an output. So the easiest way to describe this, if both uh, input are true, then you will have an, uh, and then the output is uh, true. That's, that is. So in this scenario, you need to have uh, one uh, on each input so that to qualify for AND gate. And the symbol, so this is not output is equals to a times b so this is not how you read it so output is equals to a and b a and b so that's how you read this uh, logic function so output is a and b and your waveform as you know so we have zero zero so you have zero zero so this is zero and if you have only one input present still zero if it is on the other input present it's still zero if you have both uh, input present then you will have an output uh, true so any questions with the AND gate so take note of the symbol the true table and the logic function and the waveform uh, because next week we will have your uh, first test now for the uh, NAND gate, so the difference between AND and NAND gate is you have the inversion. So you'll know if it is inverted if you have the bubble. And uh, N is, stands for NOT. Or in some books and the references, they're using this NOT AND gate. So uh, in this scenario, the truth table also will be reverse. So if you have an input on both inputs, so you will not have an output. So this is reverse of uh, AND gate. OK, uh, you see the difference. And you have the uh, horizontal bar on the top being put. That means this whole uh, quantity. So this is not A and B. So you have this 0, 0. And you have one output, 0, 1, 1. And this is 1. And if you have both input present, you will not have an output. So that's how uh, not A and D or NAND gate uh, works. Now we go with uh, one of the famous one. We have the OR gate. So OR gate is uh, only true if there is a uh, output or either one or both have input. So as you can see in this example, you have uh, only uh, when the input is zero on both uh, A and B, you will have a zero. But if you have an input at A and input at B or both, you will have a output. So this is uh, OR gate. And uh, also, the logic function for OR gate is you have the symbol uh, A or b so this is how you read it 
A or B. So this is not plus because we are referring now to logic function. So A or B. So you have this. Uh, zero or zero is zero. Z zero or one is one. One or zero is one. One or one is one. So that is uh, OR gate. Now, if we have OR gate, so we have also the NOT OR gate. So it means that this is the reverse of uh, uh, OR. So it means uh, if you have uh, the symbol, you have a bubble on the last part on the output. But on your true table, so if you don't have an input, you will have an output. But in cases, if you have uh, either one or both, you will not have an output. So this is not A or B. So this is how you read, not A or B. And if you have uh, zero input, you will have an output. But if you have an input to another inputs, so you will not have an output. So this is the uh, reverse of the operation of OR gate. Also, we have what we call the exclusive OR, or we call it the XOR. So this is uh, uh, used basically in your memory and in your uh, error redundancy check or your cyclical redundancy check. If you're going to check for errors of bits in the memory, so you use XOR and uh, it's also called as a difference gate because for its two input configuration, the output will be true if the input codes are different from one another. So in this scenario, you have a XOR if this is a, in circle. So this is a symbol A, X, or B. So if your inputs are zero, so you have a output zero, but either if you have zero or one or one or zero so you will have an uh, output one but if both are one so you will not have an uh, output so that is xor and you have this symbol as means exclusive or and if you remove this you will have xor symbol if you have xor we will have also what we call uh, the implementation. So if you're going to design a truth table, what will happen? So this is not allowed. Uh, you need to put uh, uh, the correct uh, implementation or drawing would be this one. A, B, and you have C. So you shall not combine this with uh, this. So now we move forward with uh, uh, this uh, scenario. So in this example, so you need uh, three inputs, but if you have uh, output A, so what will happen? So if you have uh, output A, so you'll have zero. But if you have either uh, B or C, so you have an output. In this scenario, if you have one, zero, zero, so you have uh, one, and this is uh, an example of a three uh, input uh, truth table for XOR. 
uh, you could uh, accomplish this by putting values here so that you'll know if it is correct so you put for example if you put one 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 first thing first you need to solve for the this value so we check so if you have uh, a b zero so you have zero so we check a a zero zero so you have zero so if uh, c is zero c zero and the result of both is zero also you have zero so this is correct now if you move with the uh, zero zero b and you have a c as one so we check so if this is a zero zero so it simply said it will be zero and if you have zero and one definitely you will have one so this is uh, correct at the same time also with the next uh, items on the uh, truth table now uh, or possibly the last part is the xnor uh, it is the identical to xor gate with the exception that the output is inverted so this is how the xnor is implemented also you put a uh, horizontal bar it means that this is not not okay and you have these values a x nor b so a x nor b now in in this example what would be the uh, result so try to check uh, if you need more time i'll give you what is the answer letter a sir okay so we'll check so if you're going to look at it so you have a what is this symbol a and d a and uh, b now if you have the inverter symbol it's usually the same saying that this is none it's like you put this bubble to the side so if we recall so this would happen and you see the logic function is this one a on a and uh, uh, a and uh, b so a and b so this is the logic function if you go to our example test so you have to use either prime or you put bar and the symbol is what after you finish on this side you go with this so this is xor so this is xor so the symbol for xor is your first input xor b so this one so we go back to the example so it's like saying that this is a and this is b so uh, the answer correct answer would be uh, so this uh, uh, letter a so you need to put all of this into not because of the inversion so if you forget to put uh, this quantity 
this would be wrong already. So any more questions on this example? So we go now to the next after logic gates. So we have some uh, application of logic gates. So we have a digital circuit operation. So normally we are applying a generic digital transmitter to receiver. So we have TX for transmitter and the receiver for RX. And you send data serially from zero or one. So this is how uh, digital signaling uh, refers to the binary codes that are generated and transmitted successfully between uh, two digital circuits. So this is a digital circuit. So you transfer only one and zeros in the digital code. And now we have the logic levels. So you have logic high and logic low. And the VH is your threshold voltage or the average voltage. Now uh, we also need to define what is positive and negative logic. So if the logic level is low, uh, and the logic value would be, uh, when you say positive logic, it's going to be zero if the logic is uh, level is low. If it's negative logic, it means that the low level, uh, the logic level low is a negative logic. And if you have a logic level uh, high, the positive logic would be one and your negative logic will be zero. So it represents a high level uh, value one and a low level uh, value uh, zero. And that is in binary. Now we are going now to the input uh, DC uh, specification. Why we are referring to DC? So we are referring to direct current, meaning uh, this uh, current is uh, having almost uh, average voltage that is near to its operational uh, capacity. So uh, input DC specification required by each uh, uh, ranges of voltage. So when uh, your uh, value drops to the tolerance, it means that it's going to be low. And also you need to uh, identify uh, the values that you are going to implement. So for example, we have the transmitter output within this range. So meaning uh, we have the VOH uh, max, meaning this is logic high. And you have also uh, when the transmitter output is uh, voltage is low, so you have uh, VOL max. So these are the uh, measurements. And this would identify the uh, noise margin high or no noise margin low in the calculations. So later we have some examples. Now, uh, this is, uh, as we know, this is noise uh, margin high and this is noise margin low in reference to this uh, diagram. So that's how uh, you apply uh, the calculation from uh, these values. So VOL max. So minus uh, also uh, IL max. So this is uh, UL max minus IL max. So you will have this uh, result. So why do we have noise margin? Because you could not eliminate noise in our transmitter. It always has uh, uh, error. 
because there's no such thing as a perfect uh, system, but you aim to have uh, better accuracy and efficiency. Now we are uh, just more definition here. Just you read it. And uh, this uh, signify also the uh, the margin built into the transmitter and receiver circuit when communicating with logic zero. Noise margins are always uh, specified as positive quantities, thus the order of uh, subtrend minus the minuend in these differences. So that's why you have this. Uh, specification of a digital circuit so later we have some few examples of this now also uh, power supply so this is just uh, making up the standards and what you're going to use normally so when you see a VCC VDD it's commonly abbreviation it means collector to collector or drain to drain also, uh, digital circuits uh, specify the required power su supply voltage, and uh, where are you going to locate this specification? Also, normally, uh, later we'll discuss the specification, and uh, now uh, when you see output current, normally it's uh, I, so as uh, subscript O and we say equation current is I dot Q so if you have a supply voltage your VCC normally you have the uh, subscript CCC that is a uh, collector to collector and now we have the calculation here so given the driver specified to have a cushion current as IQ uh, 1 milliampere, and that in the driving a logic high on two of its uh, output pins, so each uh, two loads on the output pins is being sourced with uh, 4 milliampere of current from the driver. So how are we going to solve this? So since your uh, collector current moves uh, opposite from your VCC, so normally you will have the, uh, from the input uh, 1 and 2, so you will create a, uh, what we call a Kirchhoff's current law. So K, uh, KCL, so you have to have the loop, uh, equal to zero and uh, collector current uh, you just going to collect IQ and uh, I output and this the second and the first output so you have uh, one milliampere and you have uh, the two milliampere is being uh, uh, fed out the system and uh, when you see the opposite uh, direction, it means subtract. And if you have uh, this uh, two, it means you're going to add. And usually, uh, quotient, uh, quotient current, as discussed before. So, uh, so in order for your device to be functional, so you need to have a quotient current. So that's why. This is your starting current. So normally the direction of the starting current is in the line of the, what? It's in the line of the going to the output. So it means you have a, a direction going to the output. So the reverse uh, current will be on the uh, collector to collector. So in this scenario, you have uh, IQ would be equals to your one milliampere. Now you're going to add on this, and you have uh, the total values would be nine milliampere uh, entering the circuit through the VCC pin. So if this is the given, 
what do you think is the circuit inside? Parallel or series? Anybody? Without the circuit, what is the circuit inside? Parallel or series? Does they have the same voltage? If they have the same voltage, they have who says they have uh, both parallel and series inside. So this is a combination of uh, both. So you have one ampere and you have uh, two corresponding uh, four milliampere. So if you're going to draw the circuit, visualizing this, So example, you have here your resistor. So you create. Okay. So let's say this is one. So this is uh, four, four milliampere. And you have the here four milliampere. So the total, since take note, your ground is one milliampere, so you have a as a very small amount of current here uh, from the from the ground but one milliampere is already dangerous so to add it up how, how much is the current uh, you have is you have You have based on your uh, collector current, you will have uh, nine milliampere. But in uh, on your ground current, you have uh, one milliampere. So uh, there is nine milliampere entering to the circuit through VCC pin. So if we put VCC, and also there is nine milliampere exiting the circuit. So this is only an estimate example. Let me erase. So you have a, a voltage create a voltage divider to divide the currents. So next we have uh, this. So calculating ICC and uh, uh, I current collector to collector and uh, current to ground when both uh, sourcing and sync loads. Now you try to check the direction of your uh, currents and this would allow you to uh, see that uh, the current uh, will be reduced. So 
So normally, uh, why do we have uh, uh, given do you have a 0.5 milliampere uh, quotient current? So that is going to uh, appear on your load, but the direction of the quotient current is uh, uh, against the load. So meaning you're going to uh, subtract. So you have a uh, uh, question current, uh, you're going to subtract it from your uh, collector uh, current. So, but since the direction is uh, with, uh, with the IO uh, one in this example, so the direction is, uh, within uh, the collector current so that is add but uh, how do we get uh, uh, 0.5 here so this is your quotient uh, current we uh, did not subtract anything but this is just the standard uh, rule for your quotient current will be uh, added to your uh, output uh, current so you have two milliampere, and uh, with this you have four point five milliampere on this side. So for your collector current, so the one that is being produced against your VCC. So this is a uh, one milliampere uh, coming from the uh, ground, I think, and uh, you have your. Uh, uh, 1.5 milliampere. So the total amount of current flow them without the equation. So if you add the equation, so you'll generate uh, 1.5 uh, 1 milliampere's uh, total uh, ICC uh, current. So now we go to with the uh, switching characteristics of digital circuits. So normally digital circuits are not uh, square wave. So they have some limitation. So there's what we call uh, the behavior or the transient behavior of logic circuits. So in this example, you'll see a trapezoidal uh, signal. Uh, why is it trapezoid? Because there is a uh, propagation delay that is defined uh, as the time it takes from the point at which the po the input is transitioned to 50% of its final value. When you say 50%, uh, it's on the average uh, signal uh, where you can find the uh, propagation delay. And, and next slide. So we continue. Uh, the specifications are given for the propagation delay when transitioning from low to high or uh, high to low. So when these specifications are equal, the values are often given as a specification to your uh, time. So you have the term rise time and also uh, it the transition uh, when going from low to high is your rise time. So this is your uh, rise time. And uh, you have your uh, single uh, specification uh, of your uh, uh, trans uh, of your rise time and your uh, this is a uh, I think transient time but uh, fall time, I think, ah, fall time. So this is your fall time, TF. So that is from 10% uh, to 90%. Why we're having to discuss this, all of these are not really applicable to the uh, MATLAB, but in the actual practice, you're going to encounter this in your data sheet. So the data sheet are important in a electronic component 
uh, in order for you to identify uh, if the data is correct or if the package that you're going to use in the design is good. So first thing first, this is an example of a data sheet uh, of a uh, IC. So this IC contains hex inverters inside the chip. And this is the part number. So these are the specification, the packages that is available when you try to buy this type of inverters. The next slide. So we are now uh, trying to see uh, the specification. So this part can sourcing uh, uh, 25 milliampere. So it has an output pin, 25 milliampere, and the absolute maximum specification, if violated, will be damage. So this is the maximum rating. So if you're going to exceed, uh, the part will be damaged. So that's why most of the time, as a computer engineer, you need to have your uh, uh, test uh, portable testing uh, portable tester to check the current. So on this uh, specification, this part can only have 50 milliampere flow through the VCC or ground. So violating this also, it means that it would not able to generate or it will be damaged if it is not enough or if you have more uh, current to flow on the device. So there are also recommended conditions that are specification that you should follow. Also, there are input DC specification that is available, and you could see this using the oscilloscope. And again, the output specific specification are given for the voltage uh, collector, uh, collector to collector of voltage. So these are the specification. And uh, that's why when you try to change your charger to another uh, mobile phone, you need to check the current specification because it may, it may, uh, it may help, but in the long run, it would damage the component inside if you exceed the specification. And what is important is always in designing uh, actual uh, circuitry is that you will check the amount of current that will influence the amount the, of voltage because uh, the voltage output is provided for uh, variety of output currents. So the uh, collector current is given for output of zero ampere. So it's the question current, which is up to the designer to calculate how much current will be actually flow through the VCC and ground. So that's why we have uh, this uh, only basic calculation so that you'll know what will be the current will be used uh, if you are going to check the uh, the data uh, sheet of the IC or the component. Now for your module two, I think uh, you will create a simple logic circuit based on the logic gate that I assigned you. So you will have it in group you will select only one uh, application theme from this scenario. Just only a simple uh, logic circuit, not the complex one. And uh, do not have it in MATLAB. Just draw it on your... Uh, I'll give uh, the instruction uh, more on how to do this. You could have this in uh, Microsoft Word also. Just a simple drawing, no simulation yet. We are not yet on the simulation part. We are on the basic uh, introduction. So 
this is only a module two uh, logic circuit. It's based on what you're going to submit is just like uh, this one, a simple circuit, this. Any questions? And also create your truth table. So for example, you have this uh, sample circuit that is using uh, in uh, uh, this circuit is used in the uh, water sensor. So if you see on the example, you have environment. So if you select uh, sensor, so you try to look uh, for a uh, you look for a data sheet that has this uh, that has uh, for the meantime no data sheet will uh, cover first so what we'll just uh, going to do is just to design this one example uh you have here uh, uh zero zero one so you try to have like uh uh so example we have uh acidity so let's say you have uh pH level. So if the pH level uh, is uh, uh, one one one, example. I'm not referring to the exact uh, logic gate. So if the pH level is one one one, so it means uh, high. So if, uh, for example, the pH level is uh, one 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 so the output is high so but i'm not referring to this diagram because this the diagram will have a different uh result so you try to uh, uh implement uh like a simple uh method so for environment, uh, acidity, sea level rise. So if uh, it rises one centimeter, what will happen? So you will have, a, uh, if it is true, then you will uh, open the, uh, the dam if the sea level rise is only average so you'll just have it zero so that is one example so another example if uh, if you have switch so if you want to have a switch so this is off now if you want to have a switch that can also be switched from another switch so uh, if you uh, have this switch in the in the bed so left right switch uh, will uh, open the light if not uh, if all uh, is uh, on automatically would it would be off so there will be only alternate a switch will be allowed uh, to turn on the light. So, hindi pwede na uh, on, on, ga, ga on mantanan. So, you try to change the wiring of the of the switch that will allow this to work. And also for this, uh, 
uh, you could set up like in this house uh, this light will light if uh, uh, there is uh, uh, only uh, uh, in the gate uh, detected so if a uh, turn on meaning there is somebody outside if uh, if if there is somebody outside and uh, the left light is on and the right is also on and the alarm will uh, also uh, proceed so in this way on this side there is a different implementation but on this side in a and b this is a and b there will be another implementation so it depends on how you create a uh, logic on your work so it, it doesn't mean uh, you need to be strict on the logic that you have but you need to explain why is it this one and why is it this two so in this uh, module there is freedom on what you're going to create as long as you have a correct truth table and you have a uh, correct drawing and the explanation is just uh, you could decide how will you explain it as a group any more questions with your module 2 No questions. I think this is too much for this <laughs> for this hour, so I'll give you time to rest. Okay. Maybe uh, we'll have Friday. Okay. And I will not start with HDL if you are not able to have all of this finished because you need background on logic circuit before we proceed with HDL. And also Boolean algebra. So since we are not yet finishing Boolean algebra and the circuit uh, implementation. Any So any more questions before we end our lecture? And I think it's like too many information I added on your part. I'll give you maybe on Friday we'll have a, a class, but it's on more on the Boolean algebra. And after that, uh, we could have some introduction to HDL on this side. 